This is Winning Cures Everything. Here's your host, Gary Seegers. Hey, hey, I am Gary Seegers, and this is Winning Cures Everything. You can follow me on Twitter at GaryWCE. You can follow the show at Winning Cures, or you can follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash Winning Cures Everything, or just go to winningcureseverything.com. You got everything there. Hit subscribe on YouTube, subscribe on the podcast, share the thing out, tell your buddies about it. Look, it is Wednesday, March 6th. Uh, For those of you that have watched the show before, you know that I am uh, a born and raised Alabama fan. All sports, that includes basketball, not just football. Uh, I have been through the ups and the downs. I'm going to talk about Alabama basketball and the state of the program today. After last night's 66-60 to loss to Auburn, I've also got college basketball picks uh, at the end of it. Went 4-1 and one last night against the number, hit a, uh, a nice money line parlay. Uh, got another one of those for you tonight, along with four picks. Uh, they are all sides this evening. So, let's go ahead and jump into this uh, the show, brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They've got six incredible sports books down there. You can find more information on all six of them over at tunicatravel.com. Chris and I will be, and if you've watched the show, you already know, we will be at Samstown Casino in Tunica on March 21st, March 22nd. That's a Thursday and Friday, the first two days of the NCAA tournament. So that is the round of 64. We're not counting Dayton, all that kind of mess. The first two days of full big-time games. We're going to be there for that. We broadcast live at 10 a.m. Come out, enjoy the show, hang out with us. We're going to be there all day, both days, staying the night on Thursday night at Samstown in one of the rooms. So come hang out with us. Uh, There's a little link down in the description uh, or over at the Facebook page. Either way, tell us you're coming. Let us know where you're coming from. We've got people from Oklahoma, Texas, and South Carolina already confirmed. Uh, working on some people from Alabama and whatnot. We're going to have a big party down there. It's going to be a good time. We hope you can come out and join us. Let's talk about Avery Johnson. Let's talk about Alabama basketball. 17-13 and 13 is the record for Alabama basketball right now. Now, the question that I have is, what should the expectations be for a basketball coach that is paid Top 15 money in the country. Avery Johnson makes $2.9 million a year. I have a list of coaches that make less than that. Now, let's just discuss the fact that Alabama is a football school. The basketball program has not been a, a big thing there since the eh, 90s, I guess you could say. Maybe maybe the 80s, 70s and 80s, it was a big deal. C.M. Newton, Wimp Sanderson, all that. Uh, you get into David Hobbs. You get into Mark Godfrey. Godfrey did some good things. Things, of course, started to wane towards the end of his tenure. Uh, and since then, Anthony Grant wasn't able to get anything turned around. Avery Johnson now 17-13 and 13 for the last four years in a row. His first four years at the school... 17 and 13. He's had really good recruiting classes. They have better players than a 17 and 13 record. They just do. I understand that the SEC has gotten better over the last few years, but 17 and 13 is frankly inexcusable. In the last four seasons, the regular season record for Avery Johnson in February and March 17 and 22. In the last two years, last season ended the regular season 0-5 on a five-game losing streak. This season, he is 2-5 in the last seven games, and they still have to play at Arkansas. Not an easy win, even though Arkansas is down this year. It's a must-win game. His teams do not show up in must-win spots. I am utterly disgusted with the late-game theatrics by this basketball team. And it's the same thing all the time. Now, how they won at South Carolina, I will never understand. The only three wins that they have in the last nine games, outside of that South Carolina game, 
are Georgia at home, Vanderbilt at home, and Vanderbilt on the road. Georgia has two SEC wins. Vanderbilt has zero. That's not a good thing. Not when you're trying to get to the NCAA tournament. This would be Alabama's second NCAA. If they make it this year, it would only be the third time they have made it since 2006. And yet they are paying coaches and they are giving them resources like a top 15 basketball program. That is unheard of. And utterly ridiculous, really. I mean, it's just, it's it's not, I, I, I understand that it is difficult because the recruiting base in the state of Alabama is not what it was in the 80s and 90s. You don't have Antonio McDice. You don't have Jason Caffey. You don't have Robert Ory. You don't have Latrell Sprewell. All these guys from Alabama that came to Alabama. You don't have those anymore. Now, this coming year, you've got Trenton Watford, but he seems to be trending towards going to Memphis with James Wiseman. Either way, I have, I'm have i out on this situation. I think it is time to cut ties with Avery Johnson. He had never been a college coach before he took this job. Yeah, he was the NBA coach of the year. But the college game and the pro game are two completely different things, as you can tell by Rick Pitino. John Calipari, etc. Uh, there are guys that transcend it, right? Larry Brown, Brad Stevens, guys like that, that transcend the whole thing. And they can win anywhere because they just know basketball. It's not all about that, especially in the college game nowadays. So I have a list of possible coaches that I would like for Alabama to maybe look at, to maybe go after. And I'll explain a little bit about each one of them. Now, if you're not an Alabama fan, I understand you might not like today's podcast. That's okay. We're not going to go long on this. The uh, The picks will come up right after. But tell me what's wrong with going after Rick Bird from Belmont. Now, his current salary, he's 65 years old. That's one problem, right? At most, he's probably got 10 more years. But at that point, you can get him set up. His assistants have gone on and become very successful uh, Casey Alexander at Lipscomb was one of Rick Bird's assistants for 16 years. That might be somebody you might look at. So either Rick Bird from Belmont, who has been in D1 coaching for 20 years, 413 and 218 overall. He's 0-7 in the NCAA tournament. Not great there. But this year, 25-4. and He's number 51 at Ken Palm. He was 24-9 and last year, number 83 at Ken Palm. He's, he's older. Doesn't have any NCAA tournament wins, but he is a hell of a coach. I mean, it's it's basically what Kermit Davis was at Middle Tennessee, only six years older, or however many however many more years older. Uh, if you want the young version of him, you go to Lipscomb and you take Casey Alexander, who I just said was with Rick Bird for sixteen years. Casey Alexander, nobody knows what his salary is, but I guarantee you Lipscomb is not paying him that much. He's 46 years old. He's been in D1 coaching for eight years. He's 123 and 117, but he finally got things turned around at Lipscomb, which was just an atrocious program forever. Uh, went 20, or he's 24 and six so far this year with the number 50 Ken Palm team. Went 23 and 10 last year, uh, the number 167 Ken Palm team. It, you know, he's been to one NCAA tournament by himself as a head coach. Might be somebody to look at. I would throw the Brinks truck at Mick Cronin from Cincinnati. The rumors last year were that he wasn't happy with the way that the administration was handling things at Cincinnati. He's making $2.2 million. Avery Johnson, by the way, $2.9 million a year. Mick Cronin, $2.2 million. He's been in D1 coaching for 16 years. Uh, 362 and 168 overall record. He is 6-10 and 10 in the NCAA tournament. I don't even think that that necessarily matters. Uh, make it to a couple of Sweet 16s in seven, eight, nine, ten 9, 10 years, and Alabama fans will be happy. But this year, 25 and 4, number 31 at Ken Palm. Last year, 31 and 5, number 4 at Ken Palm. Yeah, they got upset in the second round last year by Nevada. That kind of crap happens. But Mick Cronin, 47 years old, you know he can recruit to a system. He coaches defense. That kind of stuff wins, and it will always win. He's, he's about to go to his ninth straight NCAA tournament. Go get Mick Cronin. Uh, other names to look at. 
Kelvin Sampson, he's 63. He's got NCAA problems, but Houston, it, the guy has won everywhere he's been. Houston this year, 27-2. and two. Uh, Kelvin Sampson, 13-15 and 15 in the NCAA tournament over his career. Biggest problem with him, he's got a son that he's going to bring in as an assistant coach, and he will want his son to take over as head coach after he leaves. He'll probably want that written into a contract. He will likely get it at Houston. I don't know that Alabama would be okay with that. Um, next up, Steve Forbes at East Tennessee State. Was an assistant coach under Bruce Pearl at Tennessee. Uh, the guy can recruit his rear end off. Uh, he knows the Memphis market. He, know, he knows the entire southeast region. He can get players from basically anywhere. The guy is good. Uh, he's 53 years old. He only makes $650,000 a year. Uh, he's been in D1 coaching as a head coach for four years now, 99-37. and 37. He's 0-1 in the NCAA tournament, uh, but he's 23-8 and 8 this year, number 65 at Ken Palm. He was 25-9 and 9 last year, number 93 at Ken Palm. Uh, solid recruiter. Fun brand of basketball. Steve Forbes, I think, would be great. If you're looking to go really, really young, the way that LSU did with Will Wade and whatnot, Furman coach Bob Ritchie, he's only 35 years old. That's a private school, so there's no telling what his salary is. I'm going to guess it's not much. He's only in his second season. He's 47-16 and 16 at Furman. 24-6 and six this year, number 52 at Ken Palm. 23-10 last year, number 95 at Ken Palm. He has not made an NCAA tournament, likely will this year. Uh, he had Furman ranked in the AP Top 25 for the first time ever. His dad is a Hall of Fame basketball coach. I mean, the kid, he's a rising star. I, I believe in him to be able to go out and get players. I believe in him to be able to teach them. Bob Ritchie, a name to look out for. Nate McMahon from Murray State. That is somebody to keep an eye on. Uh, Nate Oates from Buffalo. Buffalo destroyed Arizona in the first round of the NCAA tournament last year. Destroyed a lot of people's brackets. Uh, but Nate Oates, you know, 44 years old, only makes $600,000 at Buffalo. The only issue with him, now he's 91 and 42 overall. He's 1 and 2 in the NCAA tournament. So he's made two NCAA tournaments uh, in the three years that he was a coach before this. Um, only issue is he, he's got no ties to the Southeast. He was born in Wisconsin. He's coached in the North his entire life. I wonder what that would be like. It, but the other side of this is, even if you don't know the region, if you are a good coach, if you are a rising star, you'll be able to make it work anywhere. Andy Enfield, coached at Florida Gulf Coast, had no ties to the West, goes out to USC, starts doing good things. Now, obviously, they're tied up in the FBI investigation, but you see my point here. Uh, a few other names to take a look at. John Brandon from Northern Kentucky. He was an assistant coach. He actually served as the interim coach uh, at Alabama after Anthony Grant was fired, but he was an assistant under Grant uh, for basically the entire Alabama tenure. Uh, John Brandon, 45 years old, makes $300,000 at Northern Kentucky. Been a coach for four years now, 79-51 and 51 overall, 0-1 in the NCAA tournament, so they've only made one. He's 23-8 and eight this year, number 106 at Ken Palm. Uh, he can recruit. I mean, they had a top five class at Alabama. They made the NCAA tournament one of his years there. Uh, New Mexico State's Chris Jans, 49 years old, makes $250,000. He's only been a coach. This is his third year now, uh, his second at New Mexico State, 73-22 and 22 overall, 0-1 in the NCAA tournament. He's 24-4 and 4 this year uh, and number 55 at Ken Palm, 28-6 last year, number 60 at Ken Palm. Again, rising star. He knows what to do. He may not be from the South, but he'll be able to figure it out because good coaches can do that. They can adapt. Uh, and then a few other names that I'm just throwing against the wall just to see. Thad Mata, out of coaching. He, he kind of got run off by Ohio State because he had some health issues. Rumor is he's looking to get back in the game. That guy can recruit. Uh, he's been a head coach for 17 years, 439 and 154. He's 24 and 13 in the NCAA tournament. Um. I mean, it, if he wants back in, that's definitely something to look at. Uh, you don't want it to turn into what Georgia did with Tom Crean. Uh, but obviously the first year might not go well. Next year might be a little bit better. We'll see. Uh, Greg McDermott at Creighton. Uh, he's 54 years old. He makes $1.4 million a year. He's been a head coach for 18 years, 351 and 238. Uh, he's 3-8 and eight in the NCAA tournament. So not great there. Uh, but – you know, he's always had good teams. Uh, he was great at Northern Iowa. Issue with McDermott, um, he was terrible 
when he went to a Power 5 job for a little bit. Uh, he was at Iowa State and was just atrocious, just terrible. Uh, Buzz Williams at Virginia Tech, 46. He may not want to leave Virginia Tech. He's making $2.6 million a year. They leave him alone. They let him run his program the way that he wants to. He's been head coach for 12 years. He was at Marquette before that, 249 and 153, 8-7 in the NCAA tournament. 2019 record, he is 22-7 and seven right now, and that is without his star point guard, Justin Robinson, for – basically all of February and some of January. Uh, they're number 11 at Ken Palm right now, 21-12 and 12 last year, number 33 at Ken Palm. Uh, he made three Sweet 16s at Marquette before he went to Virginia Tech. He can coach up less talented guys, and that is a big deal here. Uh, if you can get good guys at Alabama, he'll be able to coach them up. I like Buzz Williams. And then finally, last one, why not give Rick Patino a shot? I understand all the NCAA stuff. I understand the FBI stuff, whatever. He doesn't have a show cause. He doesn't have any any NCAA stuff hanging over him. He was fired by the school as a precautionary measure. You know the guy can win. He's 66 years old. Yes, I get that. But if you're only, say you bring him in for seven, eight years, you get the program headed in the right direction. I mean, Tubby Smith won a national championship with Rick Pitino's guys. Like, that's you know he's going to be able to get players – you know he's going to be able to coach them. Why not give him a shot? He was a head coach for 32 years, 770 and 271, 54 and 19 in the NCAA tournament. He won two national championships. One of them had to come down. I get that. Whatever. But seven Final Fours, a flurry of NCAA problems. But Rick Pitino, I'm in on it. So if you gave me one shot, one guy to go get, I would go after Mick Cronin. That's who I would want. But any of these other guys, I'm in with all of them make less money than what Avery Johnson is making right now. That's all I'm saying. All right, so let's jump into the college basketball picks for tonight. I've got uh, one money line parlay and four picks against the spread. Let's go on and jump in. I've got Clemson minus three at Notre Dame. Uh, I bought a point back. I don't like the four. I like the three. Notre Dame, not good against teams like Clemson, even at home. Notre Dame is not a very good basketball team this year. Uh, Their offensive efficiency is terrible. Clemson needs to win uh, if they're going to hang on to an NCAA tournament berth. Clemson minus three at Notre Dame. Marquette minus three at Seton Hall. Seton Hall is awful against the spread against good teams. Marquette is a good team. Yes, I understand Marquette's been on a slide. I think they get off of it tonight heading into the Big East tournament. Uh, so Marquette minus three at Seton Hall. I got Rice plus two at Charlotte. Charlotte is like 0-9 against teams uh, basically like Rice. So it's, I mean, they're 0-9 against the spread against decent teams, and Rice is a decent team. I mean, they're 12-17, and but, uh, but Charlotte is awful. That's a terrible, terrible basketball team. So take Rice plus two. I've got San Diego State minus three against Fresno State uh, at home. Fre- San Diego State has absolutely turned it on here lately, especially at home. Uh, they got a big win over Nevada about a week and a half ago at home. Fresno State, really good basketball team. They're 20 and eight on the year, but it's a little bit different away from home for them. When they're on the road, they're not as good. They don't cover as well. I look for San Diego State to uh, to win this one by more than the three points. Finally, I've got you a money line parlay. Here we go. You ready? This is four teams. Just take the money line. Creighton, Clemson, NC State, and Washington. Those four teams combined, it is plus 245. So you put down 10 bucks, you win back 2450. That's the way it goes. So I and and I'm not saying I'm putting 10 bucks on it. Obviously, I'm putting a little more on it, um, but in layman's terms, you put ten bucks down, you can win back twenty four fifty if those hit. Last night we hit with Nevada, Tennessee, UNC, Michigan State, and Utah State in a five team money line parlay. Ten bucks won you back twelve bucks tonight. Ten bucks win you twenty four fifty. I like our chances. I like our chances. As always, go over to the website to find the picks. winningcureseverything.com slash gambling dash picks. You can find the link down in the description below if you're watching on YouTube or on Facebook. Or go to Winning Cures Everything, go up to the navigation bar, and click on Gambling Picks. 
It is that simple. As always, we appreciate you guys. Go check out tunicatravel.com. Go check out winningcureseverything.com. We will be back again tomorrow. We're here every day. Share the show out. Subscribe. Leave some comments. Leave some five-star reviews. We appreciate you guys very much for tuning in. We'll see you all again tomorrow. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.